Is The Sims 5 copying Paralives? Is Paralives copying The Sims? These are all questions a lot of people are asking. It's safe to say we're all comparing and contrasting both games, but today I'm talking about the biggest differences between them. So starting off with the actual player experience itself, obviously we actually know more about Paralives than we do about The Sims 5, but there's still a lot of information that we can harness or at least infer about The Sims 5 based on EA interviews and the way they progress with every other Sims game. In the official announcement of The Sims 5, or Project Renee as it's currently called, we got told that there would be an emphasis on multiplayer and cross-platform compatibility. Right now, The Sims team are currently playing with the idea of actually having it so that you can share and work on builds at the same time with somebody else, not just online, but also across different platforms. So they actually showed in the teaser for this that you can play the game on your mobile phone and PC at the same time. This is actually something that we do see sometimes in a lot of modern video games. The only example I can think of this of a game that I currently play is Genshin Impact. So you can literally play the game on your PC and then you can just pick it up on your mobile. Yes, on mobile the graphics aren't as good, but it still plays basically the same. Power Lives, however, seems to be taking a much more traditional approach and just taking a full on single player experience. And it's not gonna be in console, it's gonna be a PC only exclusive. Next up, I think it's really important to look at DLC modeling systems because EA with the Sim series have always taken this approach of releasing a base game followed by DLC. This is a model that's always worked for them. It's always been a very financially beneficial model. The Sims has always made more money from its DLC from the base game. In fact, that's likely why that they actually made The Sims for free recently. One of the biggest criticisms of The Sims since the dawn of time has always been its emphasis on DLC models, for example, not giving us weather in base game making us actually pay DLC for it, or for pets making us pay for DLC. Paralyzed has actually explicitly stated in their FAQ that the base game will have dogs, cats and horses, and it will have weather effects and seasons. It will even have boat houses that you may be able to build in the game. Now in the Sims 5 teaser for its work in development right now, there was actually hints suggesting that apartments may be available in the game from the start. Right now in The Sims, if you want apartments in any Sims game, you actually have to have the apartment specific pack. For example, in The Sims 4, this is city living. But in The Sims 5, it looks like they may be taking a slightly different approach. So we may actually be getting these things as a base game feature, we just don't know. But it's very highly likely that we will have some kind of DLC modeling system. Another thing Paralyves has stated will not be happening in Paralyves is Supernaturals and Occults. This is something that's very, very popular in The Sims and they've always been a DLC thing in The Sims. Paralyves has stated that the game will have free content updates after release and might have DLC models, but a few of them. The Sims, especially since The Sims 4 has always taken a much more light-hearted and comical approach to life simulation, looking at quirky things like becoming a celebrity or becoming a vampire and making them into really interesting cool pack features, whereas Paralyves seems to be taking a much more vanilla approach. And just looking at actually what life simulation simulation is and not going too far with it. And there we have probably one of the biggest differences between both titles. But of course, one of the most important things to look at, which is the best thing we can look at right now, is the built mode features, because that's all we really have for both games right now. Both of the teasers for these games seem to have a massive emphasis on built mode. A lot of people have compared the similarities between the AI of Paralives and The Sims 5, but I think it's important to note that both of these games are still in early stages of development, therefore they will more than likely greatly change over time. Obviously one big difference is that Paralive seems to have cool things like curve walls and free placements. The Sims has always been on a grid but Paralive seems to be taking a much more freehand approach. Build features, I would actually say the games are pretty similar but I think it's important to note that you could say that The Sims 5 is copy Paralive because they have a color wheel and free placement but The Sims 3 had a color wheel before Paralive's. Free placement as well is something that's existed in so many other games and a very notable one is Planet Zoo Planet Coaster. They've had free placement on objects in all of their games. So I would say it's more just an industry standard of keeping up with the intricacy and development of build tools rather than copying each other. Especially with the development of The Sims 5, EA have stated that they have listened to criticism of The Sims 4 and they will take it into consideration. Although we unfortunately don't know as much information about differences between build features in both games, one thing that 
that we can certainly see a big difference in is graphics. Obviously right now The Sims 5 is in early development so it doesn't look how it will look in the final products. If we look at the early development of The Sims 4 as you can see it looks completely different from The Sims 4 now and that's because it is something that does change over time. One really great step though that Paralives is taking which The Sims 5 will more than likely definitely not take is more of an emphasis on anime style arts. What I mean by that is many anime games will actually have a very striking difference between character design and background and asset design and this is to highlight a very big difference between the characters. This is something that Paralyzed have actually stated themselves that they're taking influence from. As you can see the actual build assets seem very very generic whereas the Parafolk people generally have a lot more of a sketchbook and slightly more detailed style. I think it's very much likely that The Sims 4 will not take this approach. Obviously it's a very generic game released by a generic publisher. They're going to give it more generic and overall consistent graphics. It's very rare that you see a major video game publisher developing a game that's got very niche looking graphics because they generally only apply to a more niche audience. Gradually over time from The Sims 1 to The Sims 4 it has definitely taken on a lot more of a cartoony bubbly look. So it's very likely that The Sims 5 will also take suit and go for a more generic vanilla look to their game. Whereas Paralife seems to be going down more of this path of having a more niche looking experience. Another very major difference that we will see between these games is a pricing model. We all know The Sims under EA, the cash grab that they are, <laughs> have always followed suit with a very, very capitalistic cash grabby model with The Sims. And I highly doubt that The Sims 5 will be any different. EA never fails to disappoint when it comes to money. We have actually seen interviews before with EA employees who have actually stated that they're very much interested in subscription based models. This is something that not only EA are very interested in but many many different video game publishers. A very great recent example of this is Overwatch. Previously Overwatch 1 was a paid for game whereas now it's completely free. Another similar game for example is Valorant which is completely free but you have to pay for DLC and things. The Sims 4 now is obviously free and all you have to do is pay for the DLC but the base game you don't have to pay for it. This is something that we're seeing a lot from many different video game publishers and EA being a very big one and more than likely to follow this trend too. And based on original EA interviews it's very likely that we will have this subscription based model where you will have to pay probably monthly for the game. Paralives on the other hand have stated that they will just be following a very standard approach. You're just going to have to buy the game and then you own it. As I said before they're not having an emphasis on DLC so it will just be a solid game experience. Obviously Paralives are not really going to be having the budget of EA being a much smaller indie team. Therefore it makes a lot of sense that they would just release one game for a singular cost and not continue to update it with a subscription model. And I think this is something that's also really important to consider in terms of the long term future of both games because if The Sims 5 does have a subscription model which it likely will, it's more than likely going to receive a lot of long term care in terms of adding brand new features into the game whereas it's probably likely that we won't really see that as much with Paralives. Not that that's a bad thing at all. A very similar popular indie to game Stardew Valley. This is basically a very similar model to Paralives in which it just has a base game price and no DLC. The creator every now and then drops a few base game updates to enhance the game but there's no DLC modeling for it. Instead it's just a singular experience and that works really really well for that game and I honestly really hope it works really well for Paralives too. But what we're more than likely gonna see with The Sims 5 is it takes a much more in-depth approach of constantly adding new features again and again and again. Of course this isn't necessarily a good thing. The Sims 4 right now has so many features even my powerful gaming PC can't handle it anymore let alone people who are playing on things like laptops. So it's not clear cut which game is significantly better. If anything I just think they're different experiences in tangent with each other. It does disappoint me a bit when I see people being very critical of Paralives or The Sims 5 and saying that they're copying each other in like some kind of catty way. I don't think it's like that at all. In fact I think we should really stop comparing Paralives and The Sims 5. Are they copying each other? And instead just see them as very separate things. I actually asked you guys on YouTube what you think asking is The Sims 5 copying Paralives? One of the top comments says I think they're at least taking notes and letting Paralives affect some of their
their decisions. I've always said competition is something that's never existed in the life simulation genre but really needs to exist because when there's competition, whether they're doing it actively or passively, different publishers will try harder to push their contents and make it even better. So I do honestly think it's a really great thing that both games are being developed in Tangent. But one user really nicely put, I wouldn't say it's copying, they finally have competition and they know that they need to step their game up now. I actually did a video a while ago where I looked at why we shouldn't compare the games so much and why there are actually so many differences. So please feel free to check out that video now. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this very casual commentary. See you in the next one.